of his time. But for me, as an Arsenal fan, yeah. I couldn't I couldn't live with myself if I didn't put Spunky Seaman between the nets. You didn't that, even mention his ponytail either. Yeah, I know that sounded wrong though, didn't it? <laughs> that, that was really wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to episode 23 of Tall Boy Radio. Thanks to everybody who sat through the last episode. Two hours of talking about movies. Actually felt more like two hours of talking about Kevin Spacey, but nonetheless. This week, while we're going to be talking about football, we haven't got Chris on from the Mir because of timings. The Mir opens up tonight, so we wish Chris every success in that. He swerved the weekend, read in the papers that there was and expected £210 million spent in the pubs on Saturday. Were any of you guys involved in any of that? No, gave it swerve. Um, decided to to be a good boy. Um, to be honest, I, I, I just don't fancy it. I, I don't fancy going out and then just seeing the carnage of people that have been drinking from basically half six or seven o'clock in the morning. Because yeah. um, there's obviously some horrendous stories aren't there in the press about stuff that's been going on. Um, so no, decided to give it a swerve, um, and probably will continue to swerve it for a couple of weeks. I would imagine. Yeah, just just see how things pan out. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm with you on that one. What about you, Andy? Um, I would like to say I spent that much money on my own personal alcohol, <laughs> but uh, no, didn't even drink it the weekend. Um, wow. I, th- I think, um, yeah, I- I'm gonna wait, wait for it to wait. There, <laughs> gonna wait for a few weeks and see how it goes. Yeah, I don't blame you. I- I'm not in a rush. So this week, Chris has kindly provided us with a growler of beer each to to enjoy and to talk about. So before we get involved in our main topic of football, we're going to be talking a little bit about beer. Gaz, you've got a green monkey. Yes. Um, Always always one of the two beers that I drink when I go into the mirror. A couple of photos to you guys on our sort of WhatsApp group whenever I'm waiting for... uh, Takeaway, I always nip into the mirror for a cheeky one, and it's like a nice little photo of a, of a green monkey. Every, uh, every, every Wednesday, regularly. Every Wednesday, one. absolutely. <laughs> Wicked Wednesday. <laughs> um, no, I love it. Um, it's it's sort of quite fruity. Um, it's sort of quite it's quite pale. Um, really enjoy it. Really nice, crisp. Um, like I say, nice on the palate. No, no real sort of massive aftertaste. Love it. So thanks to Chris, top man. Top man, indeed, yeah. And Andy, you and I have got the Hawaii Five, Joe. How are you finding that one? Uh, yeah, delicious. Nice. Uh, I'm on my second glass. It's about a pint and a <laughs> half. Uh. <laughs> good man, good man. So, Green Monkey then, Gaz. Uh, it's 4.3%. Yeah. It, it's got 1,005. Do you, are you guys on the Untapped app? Uh, I'm not, no. Um, it sounds like I should be though after this. Yeah, it's got 1,005 ratings on there, and this is um, well, the Green Monkey, I should say, is Jowls, is or is it Jules? We just had this conversation. It is Jules, it is Jules. That's big grey getting in my head there straight <laughs> off because we're just talking about this. I know it's Jules, so yeah, so it's got 1,005 ratings <laughs> on, on tap. All right, it's like Gas says, it's clean, it's fruity, it's got a bit of sweet taste. And it is made to German purity laws, um, which is Reinheitsgebot. Have I pronounced that right, Gaz? Because you and I did German at uni. Yeah, sounds about right. But to be honest, I was too busy wondering whether or not we could sort of catch the last bus and listen to any <laughs> when we were at, at college. But yeah, sounded about right. Sounded good anyway, dude. Yeah, that works for me. So <laughs> Jules produced 300,000 pints of this a year which makes it still a craft lager, believe it or not, because that is 0.026% as many pints as the most popular lager that is made in the UK produced right. a year. So it sounds a lot, but by all accounts, isn't. So, yeah. And did you know it is unpasteurized? I did. Just from doing a little bit of research, it's unpasteurized. There's no artificial um, sort of ingredients in it at all. Um, and when I was doing a bit of sort of research on it, um, it sort of lagered 
as they say, or sort of um, stored for twice twice the length of time that a normal lager is, um, just right. to get it sort of full full flavor, crisp flavor. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, and then there was what was the other what was the other bit? There was something to do with. Um, I'm just having a quick look there. My, my, some of my notes that I'm, that I made. Um, yeah, this comes from being lager for up to four weeks. Uh, nice, smooth finish, um, crisp flavour. Um, yeah, you mentioned that. There was something to do with. Um, I was trying to think of the the, the, the something to do jewels and oh, it, it was it market? Is it market rating? Is that where it's is that where it's brewed? Is it market it was, rating? Yeah, it's made in market rating. It was originally made in stone in the 16th century. Right. That was when it was first produced, uh, and it was made by monks in a priory up until 1749. Wow, okay, well, there you go. Yeah, um, yeah so, no, that's it. One of the ones I always, always drink, always have done, really, when I've gone in there. Um, something a little bit different. Oh, what I was going to say was, apparently I was doing some reading, um, they don't they don't sell any of their bottles in any of the supermarkets. Um yeah, I've never so seen basically it anywhere. The only place you can get it is actually in one of is in one of their one of their pubs. So, so you can't get it. Mm-hmm. So, interesting. That's it. And actually, they I think they have done guest beers before. Uh, but I was speaking to Chris, and actually, that's something they're knocking on the head now because their beer is just that popular. They don't need to do the guest ales. I've yeah. had t- Titanic plum porter in the beer before, and that, as you know, I yeah, do enjoy yeah. your pint of yeah. Um, yeah. Andy, then, how, how, how have you got on then with the Hawaii 5, Joe? It's a bit stronger, 5.3%. Always thinking IPA should be over 5%. I, I've already shared my beef with session IPA ales already. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's a decent drop. Though. I've had it in the fridge quite a lot. Um, so it's ice cold. I'm using the, my nice IKEA glasses. I don't know if that shows how big it is, or it's, it's quite a big little pint thing. But yeah, it's, it's, it's decent. A little bit fizzy, so uh, I might have to mute the mic to burp a few times. But uh, <laughs> it's a really nice drop. <laughs> Actually, do you, do you, no, do you want, why, why are you talking about that? Do you want to share your story about your muted mic and belching on a work call recently? <laughs> oh yeah, brilliant. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's like, yeah, I was, so I was having a little cheeky drink. Uh, I have a meeting every day at three o'clock uh, with my US team. I'm sat there in a the drink. I'm like, oh, yeah. So dead chilled out, listening to what's going on. And then I thought it'd be funny if I could do a loud burp so my missus could hear it downstairs. <laughs> just, yeah, I must have hit the, the, the unmute button or something. I just went, <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of like elf. I, I, it must be a world record. And I was sat there, it just went quiet. I was like, oh, something's going on. And then everyone was like, Who's that? I'm like, <laughs> just waiting a little bit longer saying, oh, did they say that? And I'm like, move my mouse. Oh, shit. Oh, I'm muted. <laughs> so it's like, uh, yeah, I think that was me, but uh, I'm all right now. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had to do my own piece a few minutes later as well. So I had to say like what I'm doing for the day. So I was just like, uh, yeah, just belching. <laughs> no, I, didn't, I was very professional. But no, uh, yeah, it was... Uh, I'm still chuckling about that. That was weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I still find that funny. <laughs> so th- this one has got undertones of pineapple and mango. I don't know about you. I can taste the mango more than the pineapple. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Which I'm relieved about because I've always got a bit of an issue with things being called Hawaiian when they've got pineapple and because uh, pineapples aren't indigenous to Hawaii. So, so it just bugs me. Our Hawaiian pizza is ham, and pineapple, <laughs> pigs, and pineapples. You don't, you would, you weren't, you could not find on Hawaii till humans put them there. So anyway, that's just a my, that's just my my mind my mind working over time. So it's got a 32 IBU rating, which is the International Bitterness Unit Scale. Something I actually had to look up because I didn't know what that was. Uh, so 32, it's ranked between 5 and 120. So it's not a particularly bitter one. I have to say, it, it does taste t- pretty good. Where does uh, an Arsenal fan rate on the bitterness scale? <laughs> <laughs> Extremely bitter. Extremely bitter. United fans are quite high. Much, bit, uh... much, much lower than Spurs. <laughs> mind the gap yeah exactly mind the gap and it's a big one so yeah this this is an American style IPA and just as a point of reference actually this was one of the f- 
first beers. In fact, it was the first beer to be exported to the States, Jules Beer was. And actually, there was beer on board the Titanic when he went down. Jules Beer was on board the Titanic when he went down. And, Gaz, this is the point we were talking about earlier. This is how I know it is, Jules. Uh, so what is the measurement of energy and electricity? How's that pronounced? A joule. It is. James Prescott Jules was a relative of the Jules Brewers. He wasn't a brewer himself. Oh, okay. So that's how we know. So he's so definitely Jules. Yeah, you, you can you, yeah, you can tell Big Grey is definitely Jules and not Jowls, but and then thank him for getting into my head and started <laughs> starting me off by saying it was Jowls. And I'll even tell him how we know that and I'll tell him that little story. Exactly. He won't remember it. He'll just have a pint of San Miguel and move on. <laughs> <laughs> oh five or six or seven pints of San Miguel. Yeah. Much, much more likely. That's a different so, story. That's a whole different podcast, that, by the way. I see, we, we could do a we could do a podcast on Big Grey, couldn't we? You should get him on. That would be quite entertaining. <laughs> Sorry, he's affectionately known as Big Grey. Known as Big Grey, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> when, when you introduced your brother last in the uh, last call, he said affectionately known as, and yeah. I was just like, oh, Big yeah. Grey. <laughs> that, that, that did amuse me. <laughs> so the mirror itself, Gaz, you and I. Well, we both live in Allsage for quite a while. We've we spent we spent more than an afternoon in there, haven't we? Oh yeah, I mean, I mean, years ago. Um, so before before Jules took it over, um, I would say that it was it was a, a, a it was more like a locals pub. It was a you sort of go in there and sort of sticky carpet, sort of beer spilt all over the place, and it literally was a, a pub where sort of. Um, Lads used to go on a Saturday afternoon. They'd have some beer, you know. They'd have some big screen TVs, and you'd have your bets on and looking at your football scores and stuff. So, uh, and then it sort of, um, and then I, th- I don't know whether or not the owners did, did they sell it. And then I think there must have been somebody interim. And then mm. was it about about five six years ago? Maybe probably a bit longer that Jules took it over. Fifth um, of June two thousand and thirteen was when it reopened as a Jules okay. pub. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't. Th- I didn't think it was that long ago. It was, that yeah, so, my mind. Well, so it was seven years. Then is that so? Hmm. Um, and and it's weird because so it didn't go in there for, for for a while, but then so slowly rediscovered it. Um, and actually, it's one of the best places to go into now. And I'll say, it's it's oh, absolutely. You know, really, it, I mean, fr- the Friday nights um, are packed just because they they put on um, they put on some sort of free food and stuff. Is it between? It's about five o'clock. They bring out sort of um, pork pies and all that sort of stuff and sauce, hot sausage rolls. And it's basically like we'll we'll serve it till till they're gone. Um, so early doors on a Friday. That's normally quite busy. Um, but as I just say, so slowly rediscovered it. And if we're going to go out for a beer in Old Sage, then we always end up to having either an early one in there or a later one in there. So definitely one one to sort of drop into. Um, but yeah, yeah, been going there for years. Yeah, <laughs> ranked as number two on TripAdvisor as a place to get food as well in all stages. Because since uh, Jules took it over, they extended out into the car park, didn't they? Did a uh, a cracking job on the place. And yeah, I have really to say, it. you know, Kim and I have been in there. We've had lunch in there many times. We, you know, we, we go out for a walk and stop in. Really miss that actually during lockdown because they do do some belting paninis in there. The thing is about the food. Um... I mean, you, you go in there. It's not the most extensive menu, but I don't think they. I don't think that's what they're after. Do you know no. what I mean? You're not going to go in no. there and find forty different mains and this, that, and the other. Um, but when me and Jenny have eaten in there, um, every time we've eaten in there, the food's just been absolutely spot on. And it's one of those. It's it's you know they 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 know the food that they want to produce. It, it's a typical sort of English pub, English food. You know, it, it, it it's pub food. Um, I, I, I think a lot of the food is sourced locally in and around sort of Chester, so they use um, a, a lot of locally sourced sort of ingredients and stuff. So um, we, we haven't had a bad one. When they do when they do pie week, the pie week is is spot on. We went in there and and, and it was brilliant. Um, so yeah, highly highly recommend the food as well. The food's really really tasty, really good. Traditional pub pub grub pub food, very definitely. very good. Definitely. So. This week we're going to be talking about football. Before we get on to that, though, we're going to have a quick advert for Lemon Co. Clothing. <laughs> Welcome back to Tallboy Radio. I hope you enjoyed the advert for Lemon Co. Clothing. Please jump online and check them out. So this week's episode, we are going to be talking about 
football or soccer if you're in the United States. So let's let's just divulge our preferences before we go. If you wanna you wanna tell me your team, Gaza? Um I'm an Everton fan. Yeah. Been through thick and thin. Well, thin mainly, I mean, I can't, I mainly, mainly thin. Yeah. <laughs> to be to be honest though. Sort of, you know, mid eighties, early eighties, mid eighties, we, we were decent, and that, so that, you know, born in seventy three, obviously in eighty three, I was ten, so just getting into football, and they, they were decent then. Um, and then, <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, but supported them ever since. And yeah. Andy, uh, my ninth best team in the. Nice. <laughs> 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 yeah, my United fun. And, all my life, so. and for me, it's the mighty, mighty Arsenal. I've been following them for years. Pre Wenger, I was a big fan of George Graham, what he did for the club. But I'm sure we'll talk about that a little bit later. So our plan for this episode is we're going to talk about our favourite 11, pick the different positions, talk through our favourite player in that position and maybe get a little bit sidetracked along the way. Does that sound okay? Sounds like a plan. I'm sure we will get sidetracked. <laughs> so where do, where do we want to start off then? Which position? Which position? Do you want to start at the front or the back? Oh, you got to go goalkeeper first. I mean, start from the back. It's yeah. tradi- traditional Arsenal, you know what I mean? Solid back four, you know what I mean? So, got to start at the back and then work forward. So, so go on, guys. We'll let you go first. I suspect I know you keep it, but you might surprise me. Is well, you, you say that. I mean, obviously, um, being an Everton fan, um, sort of Neville Southall was just, in my opinion, the best goalkeeper in the world at that time. Um, he's actually not the one that put in my team because um, he's not in the, the sort of Premier team um because I think he was obviously pre premiership so I've gone from basically 1991 onwards so when the Premier League started um Fair Fair but point. never never Southall was 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 class um but the goalkeeper that I've gone for um is Peter Schmeichel um just just everything about him I thought was, was great I thought his presence I thought the, the way the way he communicated shot stopper he was the one that sort of basically invented coming out with all all fours arms and legs all over the place um sort of reinvented sort of keepers really um so he 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 would he would be my he'd be my my, my goalkeeper in the my, my Premier League 11 and a, lo- a lovely a lovely fact about Peter Schmeichel is is obviously he won the Premier League, then he had a son who won the Premier League before Liverpool won the Premier League as well. <laughs> <laughs> well I don't I don't know whether or not, and, and I don't know though, are they and I might be shy, are they the only father and son to win the Premier League? That's an interesting question. And I don't know, and I actually I've just thought that and I don't know the answer mm. to that, but I can't I don't off the top of my head I can't think of anyone else but we'll, we'll wait and see so that, that might be something we, we need yeah, to check if, if you know the answer to that drop us a tweet let us know yeah Andy your favourite keeper I'll let you put your beer down first um, <laughs> well yeah I, I think when you said Peter Schmeichel I was like oh, what's in this beer like, <laughs> but no, I went for uh, Edwin van der Sar I mean Peter Schmeichel obviously you, you know like changed the way goalkeepers were I thought but Edwin van der Sar is sort of uh, just a quiet giant sort of thing. Just kept everyone calm. Just very professional, high standards. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I threw him down. Um, a few little facts as well. 313 appearances in the league and 132 clean sheets, which is quite a good... You know, it's like half, nearly half of uh, yeah, yeah. his games. So it's, you know, it's quite a testament to the, to the guy. I wish we got him after Schmeichel left, but, you know, it's... Things happen, however they happen. Yeah, but, uh, yeah I can't argue that. He, yeah, decent keeper he is. Very, very good keeper. He came close. He came close. Slightly closer than Tender Tybee or whatever his name was. That uh, yeah, yeah. for, for, for a while he was shocking. Um, but yeah, I'd, man, I'd, shout. I'd have thrown in um, Tim Howard for you. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I always liked him. I, I think he's he's quite underrated. It's yeah. just, well, uh, the threats thing as well. Just yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Little, I mean, he, he, obviously, we don't take 
take the mick out of that, but he, I think he's he, I think he'd swear whether he had it or not anyway. <laughs> yeah. Actually, Gaz, with you being a fan of uh, Toy Story, as we found out last week, I thought you'd have gone for Jordan Pickford. You know, his little <laughs> short arms reminding you of T-Rex. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, relatives <laughs> fight. <laughs> so fun then. He's got. He's obviously got to be an Arsenal keeper. Who you've gone for? Obviously, and I'm sure you can figure out which one as well. Spunky, Dave Seaman. Yeah, yeah. I know. I, I again, it's going back to what Andy says. Somebody who is calm and reliable between the sticks. And the thing is about Dave Seaman, you talk about the goals he conceded because it had. To, I always felt it had to be somebody special if you're going to stick it past him. He didn't make too many mistakes. And the mistakes he did make, you talk about them, you know what I mean? You talk about the ones for England against Brazil, whether Ronaldinho meant what he was doing against him. Um, I don't want to get too bogged down with that Ryan Giggs goal because I do I do think that was one of his errors. I just think he dived a second too early. Literally. Should have stood up. Yeah, should have, stood. Should have stood. He stands up. Yeah. That said, Lee Dixon should have put in the challenge as well first. Yes. But, Yes, that's, that, yeah. that's why and Patrick Vieira shouldn't have given the ball away, and he perhaps should have trapped back and not been lazy and all of that sort of stuff. Yeah, oh, was it was it Schmeichel that saved a penalty at the other end in that game as well? I Just to clarify, was it was yeah. it Schmeichel? Yeah. Well, did he save it or did Burkamp miss it? You know, there's there's, there's two well, different he, he talk, so Schmeichel saved it, didn't he? So, <sighs> yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> listen, I'll give you, I'll give you that. If if I'm being. Uh, on partisan, then yeah, I'm probably going to pick Schmeichel because arguably, arguably, he was the keeper of his time. But for me, as an Arsenal fan, yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't live with myself if I didn't put Spunky Seaman between the nets. You didn't even mention his ponytail either. I know that sounded wrong though, didn't it? <laughs> that, that was really wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, go then. So, who, 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 who you got? What are you going to do? You know, left back, right back. So you go full backs now. Yeah, do you want to go full backs, guys? Do you want to start off left back? Right right back? Just... Yeah, go for it, dude. Um, so right back, I struggled with this really. Um, I struggled with with right back. There was there was a couple of honourable mentions. Um, Tony Hibbert for the mighty Everton. Um, that's a little bit tongue in cheek. All the Everton fans, he's an absolute legend. Um, but so Lauren, 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 depending on how you pronounce it, um, from sort of the, the Arsenal Invincibles era was, was decent. Um, but to me, um, and I can't believe I'm I'm going to go for. A second player from the same team. Um, I've gone Gary Neville. Just like Mr. Dependable, and, and I might talk about the relationship he had down the right hand side with another player um, a bit later. But um, it, it, to me, a right, the, the role of the right back and left back has changed a little bit over the last few years in terms of years ago, you know, their pri- primary job was to defend. And you look at the Arsenal back four, and, you know, their job was to defend. I think these days it's gone a little bit more attacking. So you look at someone like Trent Alexander-Arnold for Liverpool and whatever, who is probably better going forward than he is defending. Um, We've had a few of those me, over the years. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so in terms of a, a defender who was, you know, dependable, um, solid, could probably play centre-off as well if you wanted him to, but he was obviously better at right back. Um, made loads and loads and loads of appearances. Um, hard as nails, demanded a lot from his other teammates. So I've, I've gone Gary Neville. Right back. Um, See, obviously, as an Arsenal fan, we always had, I always had an issue with Man United players. No offense, Andy, but because just simply because they were winning everything at the time, and I hated Gary Neville. And then he turns up as a pundit. You'd have him in your team, though. Pardon? You'd have him in your team, though. You might hate him, but you'd have him in your team. Yeah, true enough. But then he turns up on Sky as a pundit, and you've got to say, arguably, the best pundit that Sky have had. Yeah, talk, talks a lot of sense. Talks an yeah. awful lot of sense, doesn't he? Yeah, he picks up the yeah. details people don't other people yeah. don't see, do they? When when what? they first started doing that Monday night football, and there was him, and then obviously Carragher's come on it a bit later on. But when he started, and you're like, oh my god, how are they going to fill half an hour of him just video analysing like a game at the weekend or whatever? And it came on, and it literally it was brilliant on it, and and, and he literally picked up on, and just because he's obviously been at that highest level, you can you can you sort of Respect when he says, well, actually, that guy should be 10 yards inside and five yards deeper or five yards further up. And actually, just the insight, and he's hit the nail on the head there, you know, the insight he gave was was brilliant. Um, so, yeah, as a pundit, he, he was he was brilliant. Um, but, yeah, he gets in my team. Andy? Same. Um, when... when um, I, I've obviously gone for United players in this uh, <laughs> top 11, but... when. <laughs> 
you don't have to pick superstars. You pick people who have like chemistry and like you say, Gary Neville's professionalism. Um, him and another person in front of him, I won't say the name just yet, but it, it's just um, it's just consistency. I think that's the key for the Premier League. You got to be consistently professional, and even if you have a bad game, as long as you keep the right attitude, it's, it's, that's what it's about. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I, I again, I struggled on this one because there's two players, obviously both Arsenal. Couldn't bring myself to put. I'll, I'll level you now. I'll get this out of the way early. You're not going to find anyone who isn't Arsenal in my team. I, st- but the, we had two right backs that, that I still like to say, Lauren Etemeyer, who. Obviously, went an entire season unbeaten in that position. You know, we didn't lose a single game. I don't know if I've ever mentioned that to you guys before. <laughs> but but then there's another player as well called a certain Mr. Lee Dixon, who we already mentioned already, missing a certain tackle. But th- there was a back four that was set out by George Graham. Like you say, there was two different roles, wasn't there? There was a back four, and that's how George Graham set up his team's to not concede and probably one of the first games of football I watched was that Arsenal Liverpool game back in 1989 where we needed to win 2-0 in Anfield oh yeah you know and yeah. that and that really was what brought me into supporting Arsenal I didn't really I wasn't that interested in football before 89 you know you probably remember me well you remember me guys from school yeah, yeah. I wasn't I wasn't especially sporty was I no <laughs> no, no, putting it bluntly. Yeah, that's <laughs> six, yeah. six foot five and absolutely no coordination whatsoever. Probably doesn't mean you you follow football. <laughs> no, that's it. Yeah, and 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 sadly, nothing's changed in the intermediate <laughs> years. Um, no, I look. I mean, you look at Lee Dixon. Obviously, lo- local to us, Stoke lad. Made loads of appearances for Stoke as well. Um, and yeah, if you went, you know, and obviously you're going to go all Arsenal, so you. you you couldn't actually go far wrong from that Arsenal back four. If you know, if you were, if you were looking at a back four and, and going on what Andy was saying in terms of the, the, the chemistry between the players and understanding each of the different players, you know, that Arsenal back four was absolutely drilled, like to the, you know, absolutely drilled. Um, he, he just, he just wasn't quite as consistent or good as Gary Neville, as far as I'm concerned. And and that's me, obviously, as never fan. I'm a bit, I'm not a sort of biased Arsenal United in any way, but. There are a couple of Arsenal awesome players that do get in, though, my best 11. I'd say you'd be, you'd be, you'd be pleased so. to know. Yeah, you'd be so. pleased to know that, yeah. Um, David Luiz is one of them. Left back. Um, I, I, I've got a massive, massive soft spot for Leighton Baines, who I think has been a credit to the Premier League. I think he's made hundreds of appearances, scores your goal as well. Um, Leighton, Leighton Baines was picked in a world 11. Yeah. Right? Yeah, he was picked in a world 11 for players who play in the position where their initials are the same position they play. Oh, at. really? Is that yeah. what it is? <laughs> Leighton Baines left back, yeah. <laughs> Probably well, not too You should have paused the silence. I think, <laughs> think Leighton Baines, obviously, I, you know, he, he's been with us for, for years now um, and still performs pretty consistently when he, when he does get on, although he's sort of, he obviously he's getting on and going down the pecking order a little bit. Um, and I think he would have played a lot more time for England had it not been for the guy that I'm going to put in at left back, and that's Ashley Cole. Um, to me, he's the best left back that. But hell, Andy, you've had a power cut. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, uh, Amy's put another 50p in the meter. <laughs> um, yeah, best left back England have produced for donkey's years, um, and arguably the best left back in the world at that time. Certainly, Roberto Carlos might argue with that or whatever, but. Um, you know, he was he was class. So I've gone Ashley Cole left back. Absolutely, Andy. Yeah, Leighton Baines uh, quite underrated. Uh, if he'd come to United, he would have been bigger. But uh... <laughs> it's probably right. You probably right. Being, being a northwest lad, obviously, was he from Wigan or whatever? So being a northwest lad, and you know, because I, I think there was a talk of him going. I don't know if he's abroad or down to London and stuff, but he was he gets quite homesick, which is one of the reasons why he didn't really travel that much when he went for England and stuff and didn't get picked because he was really, really homesick and he was basically a Northwest lad, um, obviously family and stuff, and they didn't want to move too far away. And obviously United being where United is, you know, that would have been a perfect fit for him. Um and actually I think he would have gone on to be better at United than he than he than he was for us. But 
Um, obviously, I'm glad he didn't because he's been brilliant for us. Um, so, but yeah, he, he probably would have been Andy. He would have been better at you, probably. <laughs> Uh, so I, I went for Patrice Evra, obviously a United player, but uh, speaks like seven languages. He Country also kicks like, the fans. I, yeah, I remember that. I remember <laughs> that. <laughs> he's just uh, he's one of them happy players. He just loves the game. I think that's his, his hashtag as well. Uh, his punditry is not too bad. Like he was on with Roy Keane the other week, and yeah, uh, that's quite comical. I think Roy yeah. was like, like slamming De Gea, and then he's <laughs> Evra just turned around and went. I'll, I'll, I'll drive him home. It's okay. <laughs> but, if, you, so, if, you, if you follow him on some of his social media accounts, well, his social media accounts are class as well. He's just nuts. Oh, yeah. that guy. He's like He's really a prankster. And, yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah really, really clever guy. He speaks like seven languages or something like that. And right. any, yeah. all the new players that came in that couldn't speak English very well, he'd uh, bed them in and you know, get right. them settled and stuff like that. Just a general all-round guy. He, um, he annoyed me a bit in his last few years at United where he'd, he's always cut out of position. He'd be too high up the pitch or something like that. And then someone just skip round him and, and score. But um, I think uh, you, you got to think of the overall season, for example, and he, he just he just did, did well. Yeah. Sort of like Gary Neville, just... Dependable. More, more flair than Gary Neville, but yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. Dennis well, Irwin well, was a good shout, but... Yeah, yeah, that's all. yeah. I thought Dennis Irwin would have got a mention off, off a couple of people. Yeah, so for me, guys, I'm going to agree with you on this one. I had two players in that position. Obviously, the other one is on Nidge, Nigel Winterburn. Great, dependable player, but like you say, for that quality in defence, that moving forward, wicked shot on him as well. Could really swerve a ball. Has to be Ashley Cole for me. Yeah. You know, I, I, I thought he was a fantastic player to watch. Hurt me when he left Arsenal. Hurt me emotionally to see him because the thing is he grew up on Arsenal fan and I think as fans we're probably bought into the idea of playing for that club a little bit more than actual players are yeah. um, so you know I wouldn't have gone you know if I ever ever if Arsenal ever took me and let's face it they took Igor Stepanov so I've got a chance you never know even now <laughs> yeah maybe yeah <laughs> I still think I do a better job than him so yeah you're bought in, aren't you, to the idea of that is your club, that's what you want to play for. So him being an Arsenal fan to then want to go and play elsewhere and want to go and play elsewhere, I, did, I didn't like the way he exited the club. But there, to be fair, he went on and did a, a few did things. Okay. For, yeah, he did, <laughs> he did, he did, he did okay for yeah. himself a lot. <laughs> and then obviously he, he went out to the States and had a pretty good career playing for Galaxy. Um, so yeah, fair play. Fair play to the guy. Yeah. Right, where do we want to start then? Do you want to start in the right or left wing or do you want to go bang centre mid? Are we not in centre, centre backs? Oh shit, yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> yes, centre, <laughs> centre backs, yeah. Go on. Um, an Arsenal fan forgetting about centre backs. I know, I know. Um, this, this was difficult. Like, trying to pick two. Um, I found the, the left and right back quite easy really, but centre halves, oh my days. Um, I'll, I'll just do them in a pair and I'll go through both of them. I'll do my two first. So th there was a choice of a number of them. Um, but I've gone for John Terry and Rio Ferdinand. Um, I think they would complement each other quite well. I think Ferdinand, more of a ball player, better on the ball. Um, John Terry just loves defending. Um, I think there's a couple of other real creditable, notable people you've mentioned. Vidic was really close to getting in. Um, you know, he was he was decent. You, you look at Tony Adams, Saul Campbell, you know, th those guys, they were, they were close to getting in. Um, but for me, John Terry gets in and Rio Ferdinand um, just class. So my back four would be Gary Neville, Rio Ferdinand, John Terry, Ashley Cole. So that would be my back four. So. Andy, who, are you, who have you gone for? Um, so when you look at central def defenders, you always look at someone who can run and someone who's like a tough sort of defender. So, you know, like they always say um, Rio Ferdinand's like the... Uh, like Rolls Royce, a defender, don't you? He's good on the ball, yeah. gets it well, good positioning. But then he needs someone tougher to get in there. So I went for Vidic. Obviously, well, I, I think he's him and 
John Terry. There's not a lot between them, really. Yeah, um, yeah. And Yap Stam as well. I, could, I didn't want to miss him. Oh, either. yeah, Yap Stam. Um, yeah, that's a shout, yeah. yeah. Well, Yapstam, I always remember when Yapstam came over and he started playing for United, there was all this talk about what a fantastic defender he was. And don't get me wrong, he did turn out to do okay. But I just remember his first game in the charity shield and watching an Alka skip round in him. I thought, I'll take this all day, every day. You know what I mean? If this is the best they've got to offer. <laughs> so, like, sadly, dude, you got a bit better dude, after that. Dude, you had Igor <laughs> Stepanov's playing for you. So, I mean, come on, dude. Do you know Do you, do you know the story of why Stepanov's ended up playing for us? Have you ever heard that story? No. If you, if you read, and he's, I know you're a big fan of, a fan of the Romford Pele. Yeah. Ray, Ray Parler. Basically, they had this guy there. And Fenger, God bless him, I love Fenger, but he knew jack about defending, didn't he? He could not organise the defence. So, they brought him in. Um, and they were watching him train, and Ray Parler said to Dennis Burkamp, come on, let's go down, because Martin Keown was going to go down and watch someone who was theoretically competition for his position. He says, let's go down and, and wind Keown up, which, as you can imagine, is a fairly easy thing to do. <laughs> so they went there, and, and Ray Parler, Dennis Burkamp, was oh, look at this guy, he's fantastic, seeing how brilliant he was, just to piss Keown off. <laughs> And on the basis of that, Wenger's sort of thinking, well, if, if Burkamp thinks he's good, and that's why they signed him. And they actually played him for that one season. And after that, he refused to leave. So they had to pay him for the end of his contract. He was there for four years, never got a game. But he loves it. He was, he was happy enough just to be at Was it stepping off? Was it, you played, was, it, was it when you played United? Did United beat you? Was it like 8-1, eight, 8-2 eight, eight, or something? Yeah, I, and, I watched that United fans and as well. Stepping off's played in that game. And I'm sure that that's the game that was voted... Any player in any position, the worst performance by any individual player in any game. And that was like Eagle Stepanov's in that game. <laughs> Couldn't dispute that. Could not dispute that. Although <laughs> although I think Pascal Sagan cut him close a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> so have you gone through for your centre halves? Let me guess. Go on. It's got to be David Luiz. Adams and I don't think it'll be Keown. It'll be and I don't think it'll be bold. I think it'll be Adams and Campbell. No, I went for Adams and Keown to be honest. Did you? As a as a pairing though, as a pairing. Yeah. I like Saul Campbell. I think he is a fantastic player, an absolute beast of a bloke. But I just felt he lacked a little bit of that sort of leadership quality of organising the back four, which both Adams and Keown could do. And obviously yeah. that comes and obviously Keown had a he had a he had a spell at Everton, didn't he? We sold him to you guys yeah. for 100000 and bought him yeah. back for a million. Yeah, good, good business. <laughs> yeah, well, it was George Graham's time, though, so he probably had a little bit, of, you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. He had a brown envelope out of that one. <laughs> I'm surprised you had for Keown, to be fair, but... I, just as a pairing, you know, yeah. if I was going to pick one, I wouldn't put Keown in without Adams because, you know, Adams for me, even when... He had his drinking problems, was a fantastic player and a fantastic okay. defender. If you were getting past Adams, you weren't getting past Keown. And it was just the way the pair of them put together. I don't know whether or not it was the invincible season, but one of the years that Arsenal I think, won the league and you think he played us. I don't know whether it's the last game of the season or something at Goodison. Um, and I think he beat us like, was it Goodison? I think he beat us 4 2 or 5 2 or something. And I remember, and, and Adams scored. Was it 4 1, was it? One, yeah, and Adams, yeah. Adams, the ball come through to him, and he basically hits this ball on like the half volley and scores a goal, and he just stands and gives it like sort of one of them, and it's just like, and, and obviously being an Everton fan, I remember that moment because it was against my team, but I thought, you know what, he was decent at leadership and stuff, and he got he got close, he got close to my, he, he did get close to my team. I'll be honest with you, he was he was very close. There is a statue of him outside the Emirates in that exact pose. You know, is that that yeah. Because you can just see what it meant to a guy. For all the turmoil he went through yeah. in his career with the drink driving and serving time in prison and the alcoholism. And ironically, now he's married to uh, the daughter of the CEO of Teacher's Whiskey, which is... <laughs> <laughs> There's also a funny clip of him when, when, he, he, when he started managing in... I don't know the Outer Hebrides, wherever some deepest, darkest place in in um, in Europe, and he's doing this. He, he he's putting this defensive drill on, and there's there's various people on social media that took, took the piss out of him a little bit, saying he looks like Tony Adams has never really forgotten out, and he's given all of this, and he's really. <laughs> And you just think, mate, what you're doing? You're the man <laughs> doing that, and no, it's a yeah. brilliant clip. It's class, but it just shows the. Took the passion he still had for the game then. 
you know, yeah. managing and stuff. Obviously, he's come out of manager a bit now, but um, it, it just showed. But he was he was proper loving it. And he was like, and, <laughs> and he's doing this, and, and it goes on phrase, and these players are looking at him like, what? The? <laughs> <laughs> It's brilliant, it is. It's dead. Yeah, he, he's never really cut it in management, has he? God bless no, him. No, no, bless him. No. He was one of those people who was tipped to, you know, people, you know, yeah. 20 years ago, we perhaps would have had him back at Arsenal. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So, which one, you know, I preempted this a little bit early before. Where do we want to start? Left wing, right wing, midfield? <sighs> right wing, isn't it? Go right wing? Oh, right, left, man. centre. Yeah. Are we going, well, we're going right wing first, are we? I think so. Um, Again, um, and I seem to be picking players from the, the similar sort of teams because um, obviously, in the history of the Premiership, you know the, these teams have sort of dominated. Really, um, some honourable mentions. Robert Perez gets an honourable mention. He doesn't get in it, but he he was he was class. And and him. Well, Perez I, played left and right, didn't he? So you know you could you could still yeah. squeeze it. You could still squeeze him out on the left if you want to. Well, there's a certain other person that I might end up putting in there. Um, but Perez gets a mention, and him, along with um, a couple of Italians, are probably the smoothest footballers. And, you know, if you're going to be a footballer and you want to be cool, you'd be like, well, I want to just be Robert Perez. Because oh, that's yeah. he's just class. Um, d- Beckham was really close, like ridiculously close to getting in. Um just because, the, and this is where go back to what Andy said earlier about the relationship that he had with Gary Neville uh, uh, down the right. Um, and he was really close. But the one I went for was Ronaldo. Um, well, what, what can you say? You know, some people say he's the best footballer in the world. Some people say he's second behind Messi. Um, Here's a question, then, then, just, did, to, just to chuck it in there. He... Go on. Here's a question. Do you think Messi would cut it in the Premier League? Yeah, I think he's yeah. class. You do, yeah, hundred yeah, percent, absolutely. You, you you don't score, was it five hundred no, goals in six hundred appearances or whatever? So much stupid no, you got. I'm I'm not questioning that, but what I'm saying is the physicality of the Premier League. I'm not so sure he would succeed as he has succeeded in the Spanish oh, league. I think yeah, uh, you, you know what? He, he might not. Uh, Go on, Andy. Uh, <laughs> I was going <laughs> to say then um, he might not like reach. As high as he has done, but don't get me wrong, he'll still be world class. I think you watch any Champions League games and stuff like that, and even friendlies in the UK, he'll adapt to it. You, you just can't get the ball off him. It's like it sticks to his feet, so he'll take on like eight players. And because yeah. like the Premier League's all about you know physicality, I think he'll just relish it. He'll just yeah. He, yeah. He's not he's not like a diver, is he? He's like he'll no, just no. jump over it and stuff. So. He'll, uh, he'll zip through it, I think. I think he'll do well in the Premier League. I, I think if he came, he, he obviously it might be a bit late in his career now, but I think if he did come, it'd be brilliant. Um, if he doesn't, I think he would be the one player that I would be gutted never played in the Premiership. If, do you know what I mean? Out of Because yeah. like Ronaldo's played in there and stuff, there's other people that play. So, but he would be... He'd be, and you look at people like, like Benzema and people like that, or Lewandowski, yeah. you know, all the people like that. You think, you know, they're class players, but that this generation, we're so lucky to have Messi and Ronaldo. That, and obviously, Ronaldo's played in, in, in the Premiership, and okay, and you could argue he, he, he wasn't, was he as good at United as he, as he has now been at Real Madrid? And it's arguable, I don't know, but. Um, to me, I just feel as though he offers a little bit more than Beckham. I think his his I think his end product is good. He's not as good a crosser of a ball as Beckham. No. But I think he offers you a bit more. He can carry the ball a bit better. He scores more goals than Beckham. So for me, and it was like that. It was like Beckham, Ronaldo, Beckham, Ronaldo sort of thing. Um, but for me, Ronaldo got in on the right for me. Sure. I can't can't really argue with that too much. I I wondered when he said you know the interplay with uh, on the wing there. I wondered if you were to go going to go Beckham. Yeah, uh, but yeah, but no Ronaldo. Can't really fault that. Andy, I went Beckham. Yeah, you see, Andy, <laughs> yeah. mate, he was he was close for me just because of that Neville Beckham. If Neville's yeah. out position, Beckham would cover. If Beckham was on the ball, he knew Neville would be going outside him and. Going on the overlap, it, it was just like telepathic their relationship, wasn't it? And and he honestly, and he was, he was so close to me to getting in. But 
Well, you watch um, like when Beckham's at PSG or even you know, the other UNICEF games where yeah. Beckham's playing, and he's, he's just like it's another level. You know, when people cross it, they always do these floaty passes, don't they? Where yeah. they just you know stab it to the back post. Where Beckham's whipping, and you yeah. don't even see it. Like attackers don't have to do anything. All they got to do is like touch it with their head, and it'll yeah. fly in. And Beckham's just. I think if he had stayed in the Premier League with United. I, th- I think he would have done like gigs. He would because he played till he was thirty-seven. So yeah. <clears throat> you could have seen like all sorts of records broken. But he was the first like superstar on of football. I think what he what he also did was though he, he in a way he he sort of not changed the, the way wingers play, but he he didn't have that blistering pace. But he didn't need it because he was the first player of his type, really, just to literally shift the ball half a yard, and that's all he needed. Because his delivery was so good, and he'd whip it so much that he didn't really need a, a crew turn or a, a trick like Ronaldo. You know, he didn't really need that. All he needed was just to shift it off a yard, and then he'd bend it round the defenders, right in that channel in between sort of the defenders and the keeper. And you know, you've got decent strikers running in there, and he created so many goals for that. But I think he changed the, the way that people looked at wingers just because of he wasn't quick, but it was just his delivery was. Was class, and I would yeah. say he got dead close to, to my team. I but. think as well that first goal that we all remember him for is literally scoring from the halfway line, and that's yeah. that Alan Hansen famously said, "You'll win nothing You'll win with, kids. with kids." Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> and then obviously he does that, and you think, "Yeah, they, they just might." Was, and they was, did. Was Wimbledon, were you playing Wimbledon or something? Wimbledon, he remember yeah. like his arms up like that, and was it uh, was it Neil Sullivan or Evan Gold? Sullivan, just, yeah. Bless him, he's like looking at his ball going over his head. He's just like. <laughs> That was so, pretty awesome. So, if I'm being impartial, I'd probably personally give Ronaldo the nod over Beckham because I do think he was all—he was just an all-round great player. It pains me to say that because he played for United and therefore I hate him. Um, so, the player I put in on the right wing, Freddie Lomberg. Not so. Was is he as good as Ronaldo? Is he as good as? Well, he didn't he play on the left? No, he played on the right. He played on the right. We had a we had a certain Bobby Perez on the left. Uh, okay. Yeah, it was either him or or Ray Parler we had out on the right. He, you know, um, thing was with Freddie, he could play in any of those positions. But I always preferred him when he was out on the right wing, and we had Perez on the left. Where did Overmars play? Overmars, well, Overmars was prior to Perez, and he uh, was it? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, and he uh, played on uh, he played on the left. Right. Okay. So, yeah, I, I put Freddie in. Rock steady, Freddie. Um, scored in a, a couple of important games, like your know, FA Cup finals for us. Him and Ray Parler, uh, when we, you know when we beat Chelsea two one there. Oh, don't worry. It's only Ray Parler, whatever. Yeah, it was exactly. Yeah. It's it's only Ray Parler. Bang, have it. Bang, it's top corner. <laughs> But yeah, for, for me, I, I, lo- I love watching Freddie Lumbo play. I even named a hamster after Freddie. God bless him. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a good show. He, he was, uh, I felt like he was quite underrated. He oh, was. Yeah, was. He, he yeah. was. Perpetual just, motion, though, wasn't it? That was it. it literally just never stopped. And that it was that perpetual, like, always making runs, always wanting the ball, always ready on the half turn. And, and he was one that was quite direct as well. He'd pick up the ball. Yeah. And he'd always look to go forward. You see some players now, and they look to go sideways first and be safe. He, he to me, he always seemed as though he was somebody that was looked as though he he wanted to go at the opposition, do you know what I mean, and be on the front foot all the time and stuff. So not a bad shout, but I don't, I just don't quite think he's he, he's at the level of Beckham and Ronaldo. No, no, no. If, well, I, if, I, if I'm being impartial, yeah, 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 yeah. I, yeah. And which is pretty much what I've done, to be fair. So go on then, Gaz. Who have you got a left back? Left, left back, wing. left oh, wing. Oh, gee whiz, yeah, left wing. <laughs> left wing. Um, I've I've got... this bit. I've been on the, the, the session IPAs for a while. <laughs> um, as much as it pains me to say it, I'm going to put another United player in there because it's got to be gigs. It has to be gigs. It's got to be gigs. It has to, it, it, he's made a bloody million appearances or whatever, scored a gazillion goals, um, you know, carried the heart of a nation pretty much on his shoulders or for years until Bale came along and then he's doing it now um, I, ju- I, I just don't think you can see past gigs he, he's I mean f- f- there's a couple of guys that played for my team so um, Stephen Pienaar was was brilliant and you talk about the relationship that him and Leighton Baines had down the left and that season when we finished 
was it sort of fourth or fifth um, under Moyes when we got into the sort of Champions League. In and around that era, Pinar was brilliant, like really clever, wanted the ball, um, got a trick in him, could see a pass, scored important goals, scored a couple of goals against United, actually. I think, well, did we, was it four? Did we beat four, three or four, two or something? We scored like twice in the last two minutes or something <laughs> stupid. I think Peanut got one of them goals. Yeah, um, he used to annoy me. <laughs> but he was, but he was brilliant. But yeah, just gigs. Just can't, just can't see past him. So it looks like I'm going for an Arsenal United combined eleven here. There's a couple of yeah. Chelsea players sitting yeah. there, but. Sounds like right. I'll tell you a story about Ryan Giggs, actually, funnily enough. My brother in law Neil, as you know, as you know, he, he works for Man United and he's a coach for them. And he's a couple of weeks ago, while while everybody was in lockdown, he went on a bike ride with uh, Nicky Butt, Ryan Giggs, and a few of the a few of the class of ninety two. I shan't tell you where they started off because I don't want to give away where these people live. But they went up and they cycled up to Southport just to try and keep themselves fit. And <laughs> and the route that they chose, they chose to go through Liverpool and past Anfield. And I thought, I, I said, Neil, seriously, dude, if any one of these guys gets a puncture there, they are not getting out of there alive. <laughs> Sorry, just, just just taking a bite through Liverpool, you're at risk, regardless of who you are. Absolutely. I'm amazing we were still on there. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> well, I thought, I, I thought that, that talks about the bravery of that side. Go on then, Andy. I've teed you up. You're going to go gigs as well, aren't you? Yeah. You can't do anything, no. can you? 900 odd appearances. You know, in, in the Premier League alone, 632. Yeah. yeah. He made it's... more appearances in his sister in law's bedroom, though, to be fair. <laughs> you, you can say that now. Can't no, you? no. The, the no, no. junction's been lifted. <laughs> you know, this is, for him, it's the longevity, but also uh, professionalism, you know, consistency as well. You, you, you can rarely say he had a bad game. Like you can always, you, you always picture his dribbles. Who was against Arsenal? Wait, right. right. halfway. His sister-in-law <laughs> said that about him as well. <laughs> his dribbles. <laughs> <laughs> that airy chest comes out on his top. Yeah, just give me one of them with his shirt <laughs> off and stuff. But I, 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 yeah, you can't see past him really, can you? He's past ninety two. Yeah, top. brilliant. Good series for all that. If you watch, that's pretty good. That class of ninety two is good. Good watch. It's good. I've obviously, like I say, in terms of actually picking someone on the left wing for Arsenal, actually, I, we, we had a, a plethora of choices there. Like you say, Gaz, you mentioned him earlier, Mark Overmars. A fantastic player, but for me, just a little bit too selfish. Wouldn't give up that ball particularly as he could take it past anybody. Uh, if he always favoured a pass to Burkamp as well, his, his fellow countryman. Pre sort of Premier League days, there's a guy who played out on our left wing for us as well. Sometimes, chap by the name of Limpar, he played out on the left. You remember him, guys? Oh yeah, he played for us yeah. as well. He, 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 he certainly did, and he was a gifted player. But for me, Bobby Perez, I, I just watching that guy play. What that guy couldn't do with the ball, it, it wasn't worth doing. And again, he was somebody. Fair enough, he ran like he, you know, he he, he needed a shit. <laughs> Shuffled in the rolling so he did, yeah. It was it was an unusual running style. But God bless him, he was a fantastic player. And he scored some really important goals for us and some fantastic goals as well. I'd pay my money to watch Prez over gigs any day of the week. Any day of the week. No, I don't know. And, and look, very, very good player. And as I said, he's the sort of king of cool, him and him and Perlo, sort of the Italian, just like just the king of cool, like you, you would want to be. In fact, and um, Perez makes a, an appearance in the, um, you know, the, the series that uh, Harry Redknapp did where he got all the ex England footballers and stuff. Yeah. Um, Perlo's on there. Is he? Uh, no, not Perlo, uh, Perez, sorry. P- Perez, yeah. Perez is on there and he, 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 he obviously he, he's interviewed and stuff and he comes across quite well again. Um, but yeah, again, just the absolute king of cool. So yeah, decent shout, but. He's not in gigs class, really, in my no, opinion. No, no, he's much, much ahead of that. So, I'm not sure. <laughs> move it on then, move it on. So, I think that's one we're probably not going to agree on. Centre mids. <sighs> my days. Like, it gets harder for the further forward you go. It, it's are, like... we, are we, are we going to do this one as a pairing as well? Uh, no. Um, if you want to, I, I'm, I haven't. Um, no. But if you want to do it, um, it, as an England fan, you, you obviously went through that age-old kind of Lampard and Joe, I played together sort of thing. Um, 
and individually both of those players were class and neither of those two got in my team um but Gerard as much as it pains me to say it because he's caused me so much hurt being an Everton fan um and I just remember running around the sideline giving it one of these looking at it's like yeah piss off um he he was class, um, and the slip that that cost oh, in the Premier League was love that brilliant. <laughs> the memes that came after that were brilliant. Um, so he he was decent. Lampard, I mean, what can you not say about Lampard? It's like his goal scoring record as a midfielder is Ridiculous. unbelievable. Um, but again, I think the role of the midfielder perhaps has morphed and changed a little bit. Um, and you don't really get many box to box mixed midfielders now. You're all either a defensive midfielder or you're an attacking midfielder. Very rarely do you get guys that could do both. And the two guys that I picked were both, in my opinion, box to box midfielders. Um, and one of my two teams that seem to be making a lot, uh, Paul Scholes, gets in there for me. Um, and when you get when you get foreign national managers saying that the only player that they wish they'd have signed in their whole career and didn't was Paul Scholes. And I can't for the life of me remember, was it someone like Allegri or someone like that? Like one of the Italian managers that might have been AC Milan Inter Milan at the time or something, U- Juve. And he basically said, my biggest regret is like not signing Paul Scholes. That, you know, he, Paul Scholes was that good. Um, and, he was a box to box, but the goals he scored, you know, skulls, scores, goals. And I'm an Everton fan and I'm waxing lyrical over him. Um, and I felt a bit sorry for him in an English shirt because he seemed to get shunted out to the, to, to the left a little bit when Gerard and Lampard came. Um, but he he was unbelievable. He, he could pass, he could shoot, <laughs> you say he could tackle badly. Um, but he had a bit of devil in him, which is what you need. And I think. Him and Roy Keane, who gets another honourable mention, but doesn't get in. Um, I can't believe Roy Keane doesn't get in because he was just amazing. Um, you say you say that, but though his attitude was appalling. I always thought. Who Roy Keane? Uh, yeah, his attitude. Oh, mate, no. His discipline. No. Was, <laughs> I don't no. Think, no. 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 If every, if every, if ever you've played team sport to a decent level, if you have Roy Keane in your team. He a bit like Michael Jordan. If you watch the Last Dance, a bit like him. He absolutely drives every single person on his team. Don't doubt it, but I thought his discipline on the pitch. No, I, I hated that bloke. Not well, I think Pierre has got more red yeah. cards than Keith. Yeah. yeah, but he deserved less. <laughs> now, actually, interestingly, um, and this is where, the, and, and I might be shut down for that. He's the other guy that I put in my centre midfield. Is Patrick Vieira? Yeah, he can't not. Can't not best player. Now, to play and, and 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 basically, to me, you had five or six, and there's other notables, but you, you had Gerard, Lampard, Scholes, Keane, Vieira, Emmanuel Petit was a class player, class player. Um, Makaleli for, for for Chelsea, you know, and he redefined the defensive midfielder role. There's someone like someone like Ungolo Kante at the moment who, who's playing for Chelsea, class player, and I think De Bruyne at the moment. So you've got some of them newer generation I just feel as though they haven't quite had the longevity of some of the guys that we're talking about and I think in five years time if we do another one of these in five years time and De Bruyne is still around it it, it could be him do you know what I mean um, but I've gone for I said a golden age of football which was you know your 90s late 90s sort of thing so so for me and whether that I think they could play together they probably wouldn't like each other but I've gone Paul Scholes Patrick Vieira brilliant Big man, little man. Vieira was just outstanding oh, in that side. Phenomenal. Outstanding. Like Andy says, though, he got a lot more red cards, but I don't think he had that in discipline. He had those ridiculously long legs. But <laughs> literally, at the end of a tackle, you've just got this three foot of leg sticking out. That, that's it, sunshine. You're off. But I thought he had much, much better discipline, but I still had the fight in him, which, you know, was keen on. Andy? Um,. I went for skulls, obviously, uh, not just for the gingerness, but just <laughs> the best one of as England have ever yeah. produced. Um, yeah. The other player, you know, like you look at Pep Guardiola and um, maybe Klopp now, um, the way they their teams play, that 
the final pass is always between, say you got the four defenders, it's always between the full back and the yeah. centre defender. Yeah. That's centre pass. Keane started off. Like you look at all his his forward goals or his forward his game. It's just always that killer pass. Yeah. And um, I never appreciated it too much at the time, but when I look back at his his older games, it's just like he it, to me he still sort of started off like. But you know, Keane Vieira, two very. I'd probably say Vieira is a lot more technical, but mm. Keane just had that. He could just drag his team like he was shouting. I think. But, but you <laughs> but look at you look at those goals. players, and in that era, yeah, you, you, you'd had the dominance of United, and then you had the Arsenal come along in the Invincible era and stuff. Those two players going absolutely head to head. One oh, for United, yeah. one for Arsenal. And those games, the United Arsenal games in the day, were just ferocious. It was and always you, it was always billed, wasn't it? Keane versus Vieira. Yeah. And rightly so. And in the tunnel, he's like, I'll see you out there and all this lot and all the wind up and stuff and and obviously the infamous sort of Keown on the back of it, was it Van Nistel or whatever? <laughs> it was, yeah, yeah. God bless him. But, Have you seen you know, the recent interviews about that where Keane's like Oh, uh, Vieira thought he could pick on Gary, little Gary Neville. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, the, 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 those massive, massive games and you've got two massive characters, two people that, again, a bit like your Michael Jordan stuff, drove their team on. Absolute leaders in, in leaders of men. You know, big personalities, strong, physical, you know, could... We were te- I think you're right, Andy, in, in as much as I think Vieira was a bit more technical than Keane. Um, and, but that's not to detract from Keane in terms of, you know, depth the ball into the channel. I, I, I agree with you there, but um, for me, Vieira just got in a little bit. So, Adi, if you go for then. Well, you know who I picked, obviously, in terms of one of those positions. It has to be Patrick Vieira. I don't think there is a better midfielder to play the game ever. I love watching Patrick Vieira. Really, really disappointed when he left the club. Um, you know, there was there was some ill feelings there about, about how that happened. And I just wish we could have kept him there for a season or two longer because I still think he had more to give. And I think, to be fair, he proved, he proved that a little bit at Juventus. And then the other one, I picked him. Again, you know, I'm not going to take anything away from Roy Keane. I do think he was a fantastic player didn't like his indiscipline didn't like his attitude but I, I take it on board everything that he's saying but I picked Mane Petit just as a pairing just the, the work that those two did and to be fair I could have easily gone with Gilberto as well who we've not talked about really, Part of that, underrated. Yeah, really. really underrated player when the work, to, yeah, Ray sorry, Parler God. Talk, sorry Ad, Ray yeah, Parler no, talked a lot about Gilberto and, mm. and, and actually Parler can't speak highly enough of him. And he went actually what he did, yeah, massively, massively underrated mm. in the day. And and he was a forerunner of someone like a Makalele or a Kante. Now you know he I mean? was, and he was, he, and he, part he of that invincible job. side. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and Paul talks about him absolutely waxes lyrical about him. Um, so yeah, and, and I mean, I mentioned Petit. You know, he, he he was he was close to my. You know, getting in, um, but I think, he, I think he was it was his, it was his probably his lack of goal scoring uh, that was the one thing that held him back. That he, you know, he really didn't score many. But the way yeah. that those, I put him in just because the way those two work together, yeah. it's like yeah. they had like you know a, a, a mind link between the two of them because literally they knew exactly what the two of them were doing, and it was fantastic to watch back in the day. So then up front, everybody's favourite position to watch this this. This can't be open for debate too much, can it? Of course it can. Go on. Uh, are we going to do this as a pairing, or are we going to do these separately? Uh, to be to be fair, there's been a lot of decent. I've gone separately, um, but there's been a lot of very, very, very good pairs. One from United being Colin York, outstanding, outstanding. I suppose you could chuck Teddy Sheringham in there with 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 them, and I know that Andy Cole and Teddy Sheringham hated each other off the pitch, like literally hated each other. But on the pitch, they, they work quite well. Um, I'll say Henri and Burkamp, just because it's Thierry Henry and Dennis Burkamp. You know what I mean? Those two were just unbelievable, and considering Wenger bought. Henri basically as as a bit of a winger and then sort of saw something in him and sort of converted him into a, a centre forward and 
he went on to score millions of goals. Um, but out and out goal scorers, Ian Wright, Robbie Fowler, Michael Owen, you, you know, and Ruud van Nistelrooy, you know, um, Rooney, Aguero, just like you could go on and on. But the, the two that I've gone for, um, Alan Shearer, greatest, greatest ever striker in my opinion. Um, holds a record for I think Premiership goals and stuff. Um, led the line for England for years. Um, scores all types of goals. Can score from outside the box. Can score inside the box. Headers, just brilliant. Absolutely class. Um, and I can't believe that Bergkamp or Henri doesn't get in my team because I love them, particularly <laughs> Bergkamp. But the guy that I'm going to play alongside Alan Shearer is Cantona. Because Cantona was was a genius. And, and OK, he was slightly mad and a bit manic. And, um, obviously and still is. And, and the famous incident, it, it, was it Sellers Park or whatever, where he, he decides, to, <laughs> decides to jump into the crowd for some peculiar reason. Um, and, and whether or not those two could play together... And that's why I haven't gone as a partnership. I think they probably could because I think Shearer and Cantona could. Um, but yeah, both of them were geniuses. Um, and I can't believe I haven't put Bergkamp in there because Bergkamp, I, lo- I loved Bergkamp. He, everything about him was just class. Um, so I've actually got quite a lot of United players in there. I've got quite a lot of Arsenal players in there, some Chelsea players in there. But but yeah, my front two would be Shearer and... Um, Cantona. Andy? For, for this one, you could probably put all the top strikers on a dartboard and just throw a dart on. Yeah. This is, each one's different and they bring something to the table. Um, I, I went for Cantona and Ronaldo. So to fit Beckham in, I put Ronaldo up front. Oh, uh, okay. Play, yeah. Some plays now. Yeah, um, okay. But yeah, Cantona just. He, he sort of brought that X factor to the Premier League that wasn't really there for a while, I don't think. Yeah. Um, and then Ronaldo is is, is goal scoring. Last last few years in United, with United was brilliant, uh, just banging in goals for fun. Um, but yeah, you got Rooney, Aguero, like I say. Um, Thierry Henry was probably he, I, I'd actually put him as probably one of my all time favourite forwards. Just yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't know why what it is about him. He, he's just one of them smooth players. He started yeah. off like a long-legged sort of donkey, but he could bang goals away like for fun, could not he? Even when he's like when he came back to Arsenal, when he's like was he 37, 38, just just looked as good as he did when he was twenty. Sort of thing, like, but it's interesting because you look insane. at someone like Anelka, class, but doesn't Anelka, get yeah. someone like Ian Wright. But but then you look at you look at someone like like a, a sharing him back in the day. So the Premier League hundred clubs, you'd look at someone like um, Dwight York. You look at someone like Les Ferdinand, uh, and okay, yeah. but you know, you know, brilliant, brilliant. You know, um, I don't think he got to the hundred, but someone like Fernando Torres. You know, but all I think you're right, Andy. All of these players, they're also. I mean, Owen. I mean, Michael Owen. I mean, really, seriously. I mean, he was. And it pains me to say it, and I can't believe there's no Everton players that have got in my team. Um, but, you know, Owen Fowler, like I say, um, you know, United have had some class strikers. You know, absolutely class strikers. I mean, I think Arsenal have had Wright and Henri. You know, they're, they're, they're the two, aren't they, really? But I'm Burkham, but I think the the one player that was not mentioned who played for United, and Andy's gone for another p just as I'm bringing this up, Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Who is just an enigma for me? Yeah, yeah, class. But came came at the wrong time in his career, perhaps. Yeah. But yeah. still made a difference when everybody said and everybody wrote him off and said he will achieve nothing. He's too old. Actually, still had a lot to give in what I still believe is the most competitive league in Europe and the world. Yeah, it is. I think. I think. I think you're right. I think again, he he was one of those players, and and he has played in the Premier League, so he doesn't fit in that messy category, mm. but. In in his pomp, he would be unplayable. He's big, he's quick, he's powerful, he's arrogant, he scores all sorts of goals. Um, 
just just on the on the arrogant thing as well. I'm not going to dispute that because he clearly is. You know, when he when he refers to himself as a god, <laughs> you, you can't dispute that. But one thing that Neil uh, told me about him is that this guy would give up his free time to go and work with the youth. You know, it's something he didn't have to do. And he said he is one of the most humble and pleasant people you could yeah. meet in your life. Oh, and he sure. gave up loads of time with them. And. Um, and it's interesting that you have like a, a, a private persona and you have a public persona, don't you? And I think the, the public one is of this arrogant guy that struts around and he, he sort of brushes off people. He looks at people and, you know, who are you sort of thing. And, and I think or privately, he's probably not. It's, 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 the other thing is social media as well. If you follow, if you follow his parody uh, on Twitter, um, it's brilliant, and 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 the, the Zlatan parody account, and I can't remember what he said. Something about was it um, which, which day did God invent Zlatan? He said he didn't. Zlatan invented God, or whatever it was. <laughs> you know, just, just like just just proper, just random, like just just brilliantly funny quotes and stuff. A bit like Evil Kagawa, where he's quite funny on Twitter. So I've, assuming that he hasn't had his account blocked again, but. Um, <laughs> But yeah, Zlatan, Zlatan's a good shout, to be fair. Uh, but I think he's, he's a modern day cantona, isn't he? Like that X factor. No, yeah. You, you yeah. look at any Premier League player now, or anyone in the world, there's no one as confident. Maybe, oh, okay, confident maybe Ronaldo, but not a character. Like there's, no. there's no yeah. one as funny as, as yeah. Ibrahimovic. Like, yeah, I loved him, classic. even though he's a United player. I loved him. Yeah. For me, for me obviously, you know which two players are. Yeah. Hundred percent. As much Franny as, Jeffers, isn't it? Franny Jeffers, yeah. The, <laughs> the fox in the box, obviously. Had to buy your. No, because he went and played for another side. We don't. Talk. Well, it's interesting about Franny Jeffers, and I know, I know, we, we laughed and joked and stuff, but when when you signed him, effectively, you thought he was sort of the missing link in terms of yeah. making the next. Because he was the fox in the box that you, you hadn't really had. He was the the next Ian Wright. He was the one guy that's going to score you scruffy goals, and obviously didn't quite work out for him that way. But bless him. Um, but no, yeah, it, it didn't work out at all. No. For me, for, for me, obviously, I picked Henri and I, I picked Burkamp because arguably those are not just two of the best players to play for Arsenal. They're two of the best players to play in the league, and they have brought me so much joy over the years as an Arsenal fan. You know, getting the pleasure of watching those two players play, and I've seen them both play live. Amazing, absolutely amazing. I just, I couldn't pick anybody else. I couldn't pick yeah. anybody else. You know, what I mean, no, I dude, like, yeah, I, I, the, they were, they were probably strikers number three and four instead of my one and two, which are Shearer and Cantona. You know, and as a pair, they were just. They were just outstanding. You can't, like, you can't take anything away from Shearer because he literally was Mr. Consistent. If you stuck a ball into in, into his feet in the 18-yard box, yeah. you, you knew what he was going to do. You just have to look at his goal-scoring record. His yeah, goal-scoring record is incredible. It's, it's phenomenal. Um, I've got I'm, that stat. Just, go on. 260 goals. Number two is Rooney at 208. So yeah. it sort of shows... How far yeah. apart they were. Huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah, it'd be interesting. So, my, I, just going through in my head, so my team. So I've got Schmeichel and goal, and then I've got Gary Neville, Rio Ferdinand, John Terry, Ashley Cole, and then I've got Giggs, Scholes, Vieira, Ronaldo, and then I've got Shearer, Cantona. How well would that team do now? Didn't win the league by far. <laughs> you, you think you think they would beat Liverpool, Man City now if you put that team playing four four two, and you had those players playing in their the, the, uh, for, for me not just because Liverpool won, but I think this season has been a bit. Every team has has played awful. I thought, uh, excluding Wolves and Sheffield, but. Um, I think it was anyone's league this year. Yeah, Liverpool didn't have to play as well as they did to win it. I'm not taking anything away from them because they, they, they're a fantastic side. I don't like Liverpool fans because, listen, we're going to hear about this for the next 30 years. Yeah. But no, I'm not going to take anything away from Klopp. I love Klopp. thinks he's a fantastic manager. And you look at the players that they've got there, phenomenal to watch. And they play pretty decent football. So I, I'm, I'm not going to dismiss them. But, yeah, I totally agree. The side that you've picked there, I, I think would beat them. 
I do, yeah. I do think. I mean, football's good. changed slightly as much as you get slightly more 4-3-3 or you might get your sort of 5-3-2, your slightly different formations. But what is interesting is that there are quite a few teams now that effectively are reverting back to your more traditional 4-4-2. Yeah. You know, gone are the times where you might play like 4-1-3 or whatever. And yet, some so Burnley are doing it, you know, and you look at um, Chelsea will, will play sort of 4 4 And you might have one up front and one just behind, a bit like Henri Burkamp sort of thing. Um, but I, I genuinely think that team would do extremely well in, in 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 the Premier League and stuff. Um, but then as would Andy's team. I'm not sure about yours, Ad, because yours are just all Arsenal, so I think they were better players. But I think Andy's <laughs> team... <laughs> you, you say that, but I think there's, there's one side that have won a Premier League side without losing a single game, and only one. But you only win one medal and one cup. <laughs> but you, very true, but it's the only one that's gold. <laughs> Nobody else has done that. Liverpool couldn't do it this year. Liverpool couldn't do it last year. Man City. Well, they've got an asterisk Nobody after, else. haven't they? <laughs> <laughs> we, it, yeah, I don't think you can take that, that gift. And literally, as a, uh, you talked about how at the IBU level of Arsenal fans at the start, I watched, because, you know, chances are we're probably not going to win it next year. We certainly aren't. We, chances are you're not going to win it. <laughs> i give you any odds <laughs> you want. You're not going to win it next year, dude. <laughs> but, but ultimately, I just wait to watch, wait till everybody's got a one in that Al column. I'm happy after that. Yeah. I'm happy after that. That's all I ask for. Nobody re- equalises that record. i tell you what, what might be quite interesting is if post this show is if we all sort of either write down our 1 to 11s or we all put the, the, our own teams in and then obviously the listeners and stuff and people can sort of have their say and get in contact via the social medias and stuff and they can put I'd, their own best 11s in there and that sort of stuff. I suspect this is one we'll get a fair bit of feedback on. Certainly yeah. me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> there's a few Liverpool fans out there that are like, oh, let's get out, get my team in there. But the thing is, there'll be loads of Liverpool fans that'll be saying, oh, I can't believe you haven't put Salah in there. Or, well, OK, yeah, but he's like done it for like a season where if you look at like Shearer and Henri and Burkamp and Cantona and all these, you know, they've done it, That's it yeah. consistently for years. And as I say, I'm not suggesting that these players are poor players. Aguero was really close because he's done it consistently yeah. for, for a number of years and he was very close. David Silva from Man City at the moment, who midfielder, genius, it's absolute so genius. Yeah. Just, just brilliant. Um, you know, Eddie Hazard, he, he, he had that two or three seasons in classes. He obviously now gone to Madrid and stuff, but brilliant, but just didn't quite do it well, for long like, enough. That, that's the interesting thing, to be fair, though. When you pick out a side that is um, an amalgamation of talent taken from the different side, that's pretty much the Belgium side, you know, yeah. with, with the yeah. players that they've got. Yet, haven't won anything, which yeah. is interesting, I isn't it? No, might, I'm not saying they're a bad side. I think their time might come because I think I think give, give them another couple of years, and their team is frightening. Actually, when you look at man for man, then you you write down their team, and it is frightening. Like is um, the, Martinez yeah, still their manager as well? Is it Martinez yeah. still? I think it's, yeah, yeah, yeah really, manager. yeah. Bobby Martinez, yeah, one of our ex-managers. I actually feel a little bit sorry for. Um, couldn't defend for Toffee. Um, but good, good pun actually, there as well, by the way, yeah. Yes, very. Yeah, <laughs> did you know what I did there? Yeah. And he, um, so I did feel a little bit sorry for him when he managed us. Um, but obviously all the Everton fans were, were, were quite keen to sort of get rid of him. And it was a little bit sort of crab football, possession football, sort of you keep the ball, you go sideways and backwards and you, and you don't really do a lot with it. And we were having sort of 65, 60, 65% possession in a game and having that one shot on target. And you're like, yeah, great. And when you look at your stats, it's like your two centre-halves, the guys that passed the ball the most. And you're like, well, brilliant. Like, what good's that sort of thing? So, um, but yeah, Belgium, are, Belgium, are very, very good at the moment. They're looking decent. So if we're looking at the Premiership now, and there's some fantastic players in there, just looking at your side, so Everton, Man United, and Arsenal, who are, who are the players that you really tip to achieve something? Gaz, I imagine you're thinking Walcott or Wobie. Uh, well, I won't. I won't repeat the phrase that I, I, I called Wobie after his performance <laughs> in the week. Um, 
I, I to be honest, I think you'd have done a better job, Ad, and that's even now. Um, to me, he just runs around a lot and doesn't really do a lot. Um, I mean, the one, the one, the one for me. Well, there's two really for mention. Anthony Gordon, who started a couple of starts, he by all accounts is going to be very, very, very good. Uh, he's only a young kid. He's made a couple of pre- Premiership appearances. So um, the one that everyone's talking about, and he's been around for a couple of years now, and he's been out on loan, is Mason Holgate, who's come into our side, and um, he went out on loan to West Brom last year, and so cut his teeth in the Championship and stuff. Come back into our team, and he's basically holding down centre half position. And there's, there's rumours that sort of Man City sort of sniffing around and there's whispers of a swap deal involving him and John Stones going back to Everton and Holgate going the other way. Um, so he, he's one. Um, Calvert-Lewin up front um, does okay. I mean, Richarlison is, is is our biggest asset, I suspect, at the moment. We bought him for 45 odd million, 50 million, and everyone's like, oh my God, what are you doing paying that money? Since he's joined us, he's subsequently gone on to be a Brazilian international. He's scoring goals at international level. Um, there were whispers, I don't quite know how true they were, but there were whispers that Barcelona were sort of sniffing around him last transfer window. Um, so Richarlison probably is, is is our biggest asset. A couple of guys were looking to obviously unload, well, where would you start? There's loads. Um, Sigurdsson probably being the, the biggest of them. I think Sheffield United were looking at him. Um I'd be interested to see how Moise Keane gets on. Obviously, under Ancelotti, Italian guy, um, bought, obviously bought him from Juve and came with a, a, a real sort of, um, I say pedigree, but m- more potential. And he hasn't really hit the ground running and stuff. Um, but I think, get a pre-season under him, I'd be interested to see how Moise Keane get, gets on for us. So he, he'd be he'd be one really I'd be looking forward to just to see how he gets, yeah. I find I mean, him an interesting case, Moise Keane, because I don't think Juve really get rid of players that are... You, you look back over Juventus players they've lost. They don't really lose big players, do they? No. Moise Keane, has he one that slept under the radar, or is he just... He's just something about Juve want to get rid of him, you know what I mean? And, and you don't really yeah. know, but is he one that maybe is... And, and when, when he came to us, literally all the Everton fans were like, I've read like fucking hell, why, you know why has he picked us? You know we, we, this is a real coup for us to get him. You know there's other play other teams sort of, and, and we got him and it's like wow bloody hell. Um, but it, it was interesting that Juve sort of let him go because um, they don't, yeah you're absolutely bang on there Andy. They don't normally do that so be interested to see how he gets on. Mm-hmm. Mason Green it could be a late start. Yeah, well, yeah. Mason Greenwood for, for United. He, he, you know he, he's. He looks exceptional at the moment. He does, I have to admit. Well, I, I'd pick United's front three, who are actually the most goals for front three out of anyone in the Premier League, which yeah. surprised me the other day. I was like, oh, but yeah, Mason Greenwood, he, he reminds me of Van Persie, like just the way he runs. He's got that yeah. weird run about him, but he's he doesn't, he, obviously, he's not got that instinct. I don't think he's, he tends to be further out than what Van Persie would be, but. Him, Rashford, and Martial are, are brilliant in a minute. But Bruno Fernandes for me is, yeah, yeah, class. It, I think he he he's he's made a massive difference it, since he's come into you, um, and probably had more of an influence than Pogba in terms yeah. of yeah. when when he arrived, the influence that he's had moving forward, and where when he arrived to where United are now, chalk and cheese, you know. Yeah. He was obviously playing quite well, but United weren't. Whereas two, three months, four months down the line, he's playing well and United are now playing well. And I don't necessarily think it's a coincidence. I think he's I think he's yeah. very, very good, yeah. yeah Pop, Pogba needs someone with him. You think of Juve, he had Perlo, which you know, yeah. world class player. Yeah. Uh, but now it's Fernandez and Pogba, you don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen with them too. I, I I wonder whether Pogba will go this summer. I think He's playing well, so we'll get more money. He will. <laughs> yeah, I think he will. For me, uh, obviously, the big talk at the moment, obviously, Saka, who's just signed a, a new contract, looks a very exciting player. But the one, the one player, and he's he also signed a new contract this summer, is Gabby Martinelli. I just think when I've watched that guy play, he's got something a little bit extra. Playing with confidence, you know, United looked at him a few years ago, but he was a young kid back then, didn't want to make the move from Brazil. But right now, I just think he's going to be a guy who goes on to do big things. Things. Just 
Got my fingers crossed that he does it with us and not somebody else. Quick Such question. Then, show. Mm. Quick question then, obviously, so Liverpool have wrapped up this season. So who your tips for next year then? Adam, go. Uh, well, Liverpool are going to be there or thereabouts again. If Pep's there and they are allowed to play in Europe or not allowed to play in Europe, is that is that result is that is that decision no, been made? No, it's been the open air at the moment. I just fancy Man City again next year, and I also outside chance. I just fancy Chelsea. I like the way they're playing. The other one, obviously, is Man United. But if I if, if you ask me to nail one side, I'm going to go Chelsea next year. I'd love to say Arsenal, but I just okay. Don't Chelsea see it to win it. Okay, so who are you top four then? Chelsea. Liverpool probably second. I can't. I can't see them dropping off. Man City probably. Man United, Arsenal to just miss out as much as it pains me to say it. Andy, um, I'd go with City for the league, but I don't think Liverpool. They'll, they'll be top four for sure, but it's got to be United. Uh, Chelsea. I, I don't really. I'm not a big fan of theirs. I, no, I me mean neither. I just, I, sort of, yeah, they are. So they're missing some. I just think that they're, they're the underdogs. You might just take it. You know, the, the, the year that Leicester achieved it, those sort of things. Well, that, I mean, they're third at the moment. So, you know, where are they? You know, it's like, can't, take, can't take anything away no, from them. I, I'm, I'm two two think, points above United, aren't they? I'm going to go for City to win it next year because I think Pep will get into them and I think they'll sort their defence out. So I think I'm going to go City to win it. Liverpool to finish second. I'm then going to go. I'll then go United to finish third, and I'm going to go and stick my neck out. I'm going to say Wolves are going to finish fourth. Wow, there you go. Because I think that I think they can keep Nuno Espirito Santo, their manager, and I think they can keep the nucleus of their players, Jimenez and Jota and, and Neves and stuff. Um, I think they could be. Good, and I like the way they play, and they play pretty attractive football. So my outside squeak for fourth place would be Wolves. There you go, bang it down on record, and Everton to get Europa League and finish in seventh place. Wolves is a good shout. Yeah, Wolves really. is a good shout. <laughs> <laughs> Nuno is an amazing manager. Like how he's not been snapped up by you know, Barca or someone like well, that. Well, there was talk and that's, and that's why I said if he stays and if they can keep their nucleus of players because they said one of the hardest things that Wolves will have to do this year is keep hold of Nuno Espirito Santos and get and keep him. There was talk, to be fair, before we signed Arteta, there was talk of him coming to Arsenal as well. Yeah. You know, yeah. the, I th- But that'd be a step I'll... down, wouldn't it, from Wolves? I'd not, that's, not what I, that's not what I saw on the weekend. I saw a very comfortable 2 0 win. He, he saw that um, David Luiz had signed a contract. He's like, no, you're all right. Yeah, no, no, forget that. I'll take, I'll, I'll take Cody over him every day of the week. But no, I, I, think, I think they're in, and I think they're, they're moving in the right direction. And I think if they can keep their players and they can add in one or two positions, I think, I think they'll be, I think they'll be decent next year. I do that. So that's my, that's my outside prediction. I think. So. Right, I think we're going to wrap this one up then, appropriately enough, round about the 90-minute mark. So, we don't know what we're going to be talking about next week, but for sure we'll be talking about something. So, be sure to get in contact with us on social media, drop us an email. But for now, hopefully, Gaz, you enjoyed your birthday, which was yesterday. Yeah, a couple of socially distancing beers with the in-laws and stuff. Um, So, yeah, we all enjoyed it um, and looking forward to the next one. I think. And the only one out of the three of us to get yourself a haircut as well. So fair Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. That's I do it. mine every week. Yeah. <laughs> and ditto, no no plaster this week. No plaster this week. <laughs> so, no, enjoyed it. so let's say our goodbyes. Uh, so, Gaz. Yeah, see you guys. Um, loved it. Um, loved talking about football. Um, please get in touch and let us know with your um, sort of premiership teams and whether you agree or disagree. And um, chat to you soon. Absolutely. Get Andy? Yeah, let us know how wrong we were with our choices. Uh, <laughs> see you later. Yeah, cheers. So, yeah, absolutely. If you've got a, a best 11, which you think is better than one of ours, and I doubt it'll be better than mine, but nonetheless, <laughs> until next time, when no doubt we'll have plenty more stuff to take, talk about. Take care. <laughs>